My name is Randall Williams. I am owner and founder of a company called Feel Good Films. We're a film production company based here in Chichester. Um, and I want to kind of take you back on a little bit of a journey in terms of how I started the company and ultimately how I got into film production in the very first place. And to do that, we need to go back a few years. Um, so to rewind, even before this photograph was taken, I started making films and videos at the age of 10. Um, so for me, it's been a real passion of mine for many, many years now. Um, and when I was deciding on going to university, naturally all my friends were too. But for me, my year was the year it changed from £3,000 a year to £9,000 a year. So that being said, I really wanted to make a decision of going to a university and do something that I ultimately love to do. Um, and that decision was made to go to Staffordshire University um, to study digital film and post-production technology. Um, I had the most amazing three years at Staffordshire. Uh, I got fully involved in all the extracurricular activities as well as um, obviously all the courses as well. And from that, I managed to graduate in 2000. 15 with a first class first class degree in digital film and post-production tech now coming out of university is a quite a scary and daunting uh, time because again it's just trying to figure out what was going to be the next path for me um, and making that decision was quite difficult but naturally from my years at university from getting plenty of experience on set um, and obviously been doing film production as young as age of 10 i knew that this is where i wanted to go and how i wanted to pursue my career I was quite lucky, in fact, coming out of university that in 2015, social media really started to kick off. So this is when Facebook was really blowing up. Uh, Instagram, I believe, had just come out at this time. And all the social media platforms were coming ever more dominant in terms of a way to market your business. But for me, every single summer during my university years, I had the amazing opportunity to work with an organization called Camp America. Now, some of you may or may not know Camp America. It's an international exchange program where um, you get the opportunity to go to the United States and work in the summer camp system. So during the years while I was at university, every single summer, I was going out to practice my craft. In I was lucky enough to be, unfortunate enough to be placed in a summer camp in Los Angeles. Uh, from that time, I used to look after the kids. So uh, I used to be 24 hour pastoral care for the kids, giving them the most amazing summertime experience. But along that time, I was also capturing the summer camp and what it meant to be to be at the summer camp and that whole experience for them. Um, so throughout my university years, I was obviously studying my course and then throughout the summer, I was practicing my craft all the time. So by the time I graduated, by the time I came out of university, I was in a really strong position to think that, okay, that you know i haven't got many risks to take here i was living back at my parents and actually coming back from university in chichester um, i had a bit of portfolio behind me from working at the summer camp and working on set obviously at university and i made the decision um to take a little bit of a risk and it was very scary and very daunting at first but what i thought what was the worst that was going to happen i was at home with my parents uh had very minimum rent to pay very minimal overheads and decided to give running my own business a go. Um, and as mentioned at this time, social media really started to kick off. It started with uh, businesses on Facebook. People approach me and say, oh, hey, I heard you graduated from university recently. Could you do a video for my small business here in Chester? And it slowly snowballed from there. And I said to myself at the very beginning of 2015, um, I'll give it a go. Um, and as I said, what was the worst that can happen? And, you know, many years later, we're still running um, a full time business to this day. Now, it wasn't uh, all sunshine and rainbows, as you can probably imagine, but it was a great, amazing experience to really push myself out of my comfort zone. So when I first began, I started as a freelance filmmaker. Um, so this was mainly just myself working directly with clients, directly with friends to produce video content for social media channels. And as I mentioned, Facebook and Instagram were really just popping up and, and in terms of the algorithm and in terms of business be able to get in front of people, sell the products. So video was like the perfect format for that. So I did a multitude of different things during my first couple of years of running my own business. Uh, one of the main things I did was create music videos. So this is with uh, many of our, when, many of my friends and many contacts from school who wanted music videos created. So I did that a lot. And then again, working with a number of small businesses as well. One of the big things I got into quite early on um, is working in the nightclub scene. So going from university, obviously, um, there's a lot of experience to go out, meet a lot of new people. And 
from that, I managed to get a contract with the Delta Group. Now, the Delta Group, they own pretty much every single nightclub in the UK, from Liquid to Oceana to Attic, you name it, they own it. Um, and my life was spent going up and down the country, uh, capturing student nights, um, also filming club openings, promotional events. So a lot of music orientated content and nightclub orientated content, which was a really fantastic way to really throw yourself in the deep end um, and try out and meet a load of new, new people and try a load of new things and travel up and down the country. Now, it wasn't for the Fate Haunted. Obviously, the nights were long um, going into like 5 a.m. But at that point, I was just really hungry to just try as many different things as possible and meet as many people within industry as possible. Also part of that, a massive passion for mine when I first started out was fitness, not only from a personal standpoint, but from the industry itself. Um, and I managed to get many opportunities and started to carve a little bit of a niche for myself at my very beginning stages of working with a lot of personal trainers um, and also gym owners and fitness influencers. Um, so again, that was a massive pathway for me at the very beginning. And being that I absolutely love music and the festival scene, I got some great opportunities, as you can see here, to film some really amazing and, and well-renowned artists um, at the very beginning part of my journey. But as the journey sort of progressed throughout the years, um, so we're probably talking about two or three years in now at this stage, it's gone from working with very small businesses locally to then getting amazing opportunities to travel internationally, to create content for brands all around the world. Um, so not only having the experience of working in the summer camp industry in America, so every single summer I was going back there to capture these experiences. I also got some amazing uh, opportunities and experiences working with international travel brands. So um, this photo right here is me working for a travel brand in Canada. And subsequently from that project, we then managed to go to Iceland to capture some amazing travel inspirational content to post on Instagram and all their social media channels. And as you can see down the bottom here, um, fitness is still a massive part of my life at this stage. I'm working with brands and a lot of brands within Chichester, actually, gyms, facilities, et cetera. Um, I still managed to kind of keep that going. But as I kind of got down through my journey over the years, um, it kind of came clear and apparent to me that I wanted to kind of grow it into more of a production company feel. So at this point, I was a bit more of a generalized production company working with loads of different brands of businesses as I kind of just walked through just there, um, getting amazing opportunities. And those opportunities had come from utilizing the power of social media, um, be able to talk to people directly through Instagram, directly through Facebook, managed me to kind of grow my network and grow my net worth by talk talking and, and making opportunities for myself and not making that as a, I don't know this person, so they're never going to work with me as a limitation. I put myself out there continuously, talk to new people, new brands, and half the time they never applied, but that 50% that did gave me opportunities to travel world and, and do many, many different things. So throughout my career I, at that first beginning stages, obviously is a big investment in terms of financially to make sure I had the best possible kit for the, the stuff and the jobs I was looking to produce. But over the years, this obviously changed quite a lot. When you start your own business, um, it's super important that reinvestment is at the top of your mindset um, because as the industry changed, the equipment changed and the expect expectation for my clients changed. So as I started working with very small local businesses, I was then setting the benchmark to working with a lot higher end businesses, creating a lot more premium content for them a lot more top level content for their brands. And with that came a lot of reinvestment. So comparison to my rig way back when, many, many years ago, it was tiny little A7S II camera, which is essentially a DSLR camera and a stabilizer rig with a few different lenses and batteries, et cetera. To then taking the next step to working up to the cinema cameras um, was a massive reinvestment for me, a bit scary and a bit daunting, um, but it was the right next step for me and the business. So. At this stage, um, we're about three years in, working still with brands all over the world, getting opportunities that um, were absolutely amazing as a freelancer. But part of me really wanted to grow something a lot bigger than that. Um, and part of me was thinking that I didn't want to do this on my own anymore. Um, and along my journey, I collaborated and worked with many different freelancers over the years, um, You know, working with different sorts of brands all over the world. But for me, I wanted to create my own production company. And within two and a half years into my freelancer career, I decided to take that step um, and start operating as a production company. And to give you a little bit more of an insight in the comparison between the two, 
So freelancers, obviously, it's just yourself. You typically get hired as a as a camera operator or an editor or like an all round body um, production company. But as an individual, um, you're expected to do everything um, just yourself. But as a production company, it opens up the doors to bigger projects with bigger brands, and the expectancy is a lot higher. And obviously, with that comes more better. Uh, essentially a better financial return because you're working on a bigger project for a bigger brands. So that for me progressively as a, as a businessman was the right choice for me. I then started building my freelance team up even more over the years, working with so many different people all over the UK, but really building a really strong network here in West Sussex to really work with a lot of West Sussex brands, but then also getting the opportunity to take those, those teams internationally as well. Um, number of different projects here, um, working with a golfing company in Spain, to working with the local colleges here in Chichester and getting great opportunities to work with some really high flying celebrities. So this is, if people don't know, is Jamie Murray, Andy Murray's brother. Um, and then I've also got the opportunity to work with people like Anthony Joshua and David Hay. Um, again, just from opportunities of, of building our own experiences with these clientele by reaching out on, on social media and really expanding that network by continuously reinvesting ourselves, continuously re investing in the craft and just keep creating content um so with that bigger network of freelancers we're operating as a production company working on bigger projects and bigger clients and it isn't until this past year we actually rebranded the company so i was working as more of a generalized production company still up until this stage until about a year and a half two years ago um so you know around four or five years coming out of university the big takeaway for me was keep reinvesting in the kit, keep reinvesting in the team and keep reinvesting to, to create the best possible projects I could. Because from that, that spread the word of the company, that spread the word of the, the, the great people that we are and the great content that we create and the impact and the results we get for our clients. So that was always at the forefront of my mind. So which takes us to this past year, which has obviously been, you know, this past year and a half, two years, which has been a bit crazy for everyone. Um, when COVID hit, it was a bit of a shock. We lost, well, I say lost, work was postponed for about six months. So that obviously has a massive impact on the business. But luckily at this stage, I was still utilizing the freelance team um, and still be able to work with our clients on projects. But it gave us an opportunity to just take a little bit of a step back. At this stage, I've been kind of riding the wave on social media and really maximizing that time on social media channels to create content for brands all over the world. But as soon as the world shut down, everything shut down and it was a massive impact and a wake up call, I think for a lot of businesses. Um, and this is like a, a do or die moment to see if we're gonna be able to survive this wave of COVID and loss of business and make sure that we're still afloat at the other side. And part of my business before, uh, again, it was, we're operating as more of a generalized production company. So we're working with pretty much anyone that came through our door, we were probably working with and creating content for them, which again, served an amazing purpose at the time. But over the years, as I said, we've been creating a certain type of content, really just really positive or, or, or organized content for our clients. And it's been on the to-do list to rebrand our business for many, many years now. Um, and when we had that first six weeks of lockdown, we took the opportunity to do that. And to be honest with you, it was the best opportunity and, and, and thing that kind of came for us because it's actually opened up so many doors for us as a business and a brand since doing that. And what we did initially was go from a generalized production company, so working with everyone, to now working in specific sectors. Um, so we now work within experiential outdoor venture and education industries. Um, the reason we did that is also because as us as a team is industries we absolutely love to work in um, and then all and industries that we actually love you know to experience in our spare time so mainly the outdoor venture space but for us it was a reasoning and a time to be able to cement our feet in the ground to say that you know what if we're going to do this let's do this we've been doing this for now five years at this point let's really hone down and it's a very scary decision to niche down but the best decision we've ever made so ultimately, as a team, up until this stage, we've been collectively working in the industry for, um, you know, come over 10 years collectively as a business, um, which is, yeah, we've got great experience behind us and we knew this was the best decision to do. And from rebranded company to Feel Good Films, um, over the past couple of years, we've been creating Feel Good content for our clients, content that's really positive um, and working with those really positive outgoing organizations. 
Um, and so for us, that natural shift was fantastic. And with COVID, it managed me to open up my time to talk to a load of new businesses all around the world and really kind of get this brand out there in a really new light. Um, and it's really opened the doors for us. So I don't know how much research you guys have done, but I thought I'd just really just show you our showreel to give you a good understanding of the type of content we create for our clients. Um, and hopefully you can hear this, fingers crossed you can. If not, it's on our website, which I'm sure we can, we can send out later on, but hopefully you can view this. This is our showreel. Everybody wanna come, come turn it up, come into the volcano, make it jump, jump free in the wild with a magic touch. Set it off, we arrive so high. So fingers crossed you managed to hear and view that and hopefully that wasn't a, a terrible viewing experience but hopefully you managed to um, so as, as I mentioned, we are now a company called Feel Good Films. And as I mentioned, just to give a bit of a comparison, over those years, I started as a freelancer. So directly working for myself and me just being the crew member within that, those productions to now working with such an expansive of creatives, some who are full-time with us on the business and some who are part-time in the business. We are a full service film production company. So our team spans from directors, producers, cinematographers, filmmakers, photographers, and drone operators, everything that you would require to create a premium production um, for any of our sort of clients. And we've got two different sides of our business now. Um, and again, that shift and that time from COVID to be able to take a step back and think about what we want to do as an organization going forward um, was actually a, a weird blessing in disguise. So we've now put out to the world and we will launch a new website in a couple of weeks that we create brand films for our clients, which we've been doing for about seven years now, telling the stories of organizations, their flagship pieces of content, and then also creating regular social media content for our clients on a subscription-based service. And as mentioned, since rebranding the company, it's allowed us to create more of a brand, which people can truly invest in, um, which really has opened the doors for us, even over the past 10 months, to really talk to some fantastic, amazing brands out in the UK and worldwide and just get an amazing opportunities because brands can align with us now, whereas before it was more of a generalized production company. One of which brand, which was a, a big player for us this year is, you probably heard of it, a, a company called Go Ape. Um, you know, from working in the outdoor venture space and saying that we work in the outdoor venture space now, we all thought to align with one of the biggest outdoor adventure UK companies was a massive goal for us. And since we branded the company and realigning ourselves and making the most of those opportunities, we've already managed to collaborate with Go8 three times since starting talking to them in March. So again, anything's possible through social media. I think the power of social media is so incredible. Um, but for us as a business, it's just opened up so many doors and you know, it's not, an, even if we're based in Chichester, the world is our oyster on the back of that. And we've managed to work with brands and businesses all over the world, even since I started the business as a freelancer, but since rebranded the company, that's really helped. So as I mentioned, we've worked with brands all over the world. We've had amazing experiences going across to America, and that's all still a massive plan of our business model. Um, we've gone as far as Bangladesh to shoot content for clients um, and all over Europe as well. But as a business, and, and probably one of the, the thing I wanted to kind of leave you with is that anything is possible if you put your mind to it. And I think for me, understanding where I was coming out of university, had an idea of what I wanted to do, but taking that risk of what is the worst that's going to happen um, and put all my cards out on the table was the best decision I've ever made. And you'll find progressively as you build your business, you get to meet so many amazing people, you get to work with so many cool, amazing brands that just taking that risk and punting yourself is the best decision you can do. And you find that if you can channel your energy into one thing and one thing only to really grow something, um, there's so much that you can do. And when I started, obviously Facebook and Instagram had just come out. Um, so I was along that sort of immediate social media boom. 
but I would say the opportunities now are even greater than ever before when it comes to marketing your business. I'm sure you're all familiar with platforms like TikTok. We create content for our brands on TikTok now and the reach that you can get out there and the space you can get in front of so many people is absolutely unbelievable. Um, so if I was to leave with any parting notes is that, you know, if you really want to do something and it sounds cheesy and corny and, you know, you can take it for what you will, but if you really want to achieve something, you put your mind to it, you really can do it in the world that we live in today more than ever before. Um, even when my parents started their businesses many, many, many years ago, um, they didn't have nowhere near as many opportunities as we do now. So if I was going to leave you with anything, that would be the, the sort of part of message that anything is possible if you really channel your energy towards it. And I think it's really, if, especially if you're super passionate about something, I've been making videos since I was 10. Um, so I'm now 28, so 18 years later, and I'm still loving the process as much as I ever have before. And to be able to do this for a living now, I feel like I've won the lottery of life. Um, and now it's just all about growing that and bringing people along on the journey with me um, to be able to create something truly, truly special. And I think even if you're not into film production, even if you're just into business in general, if you have something you're passionate about, you'll find that if you really channel your energy into it um, and really put a lot of focus into it, um, that you'll create a really successful business regardless. So that because you're passionate about it and that really reflects in not only the things that you create or make for your clients, but in client communication. And that's the best way to sell yourself as an organization. Um, but as I was looking for a keep the story. Um, if you wanted to talk to us directly, um, there's our website there, which is getting changed the next couple of weeks, but you can have my direct email address if you have any questions. And that's our social handle on Instagram. So you can get a bit of an insight in terms of the further work that we've been doing, obviously more project and individual basis. Um, but hopefully that was of good interest and, and value to a lot of you guys. And I guess I'll just open the floor now, Leanne, to any questions that you may have.